Hey there guys, this is Tails. Tonight we have some true creepy encounters that took place at your local Walmart. Some of them are creepy and very scary. Just watch out and be safe when you go to these local stores. You never know what may happen. My best friend and I went to Walmart one day to get groceries for her mom. We walked in and started grabbing produce on the list when I noticed a strange man standing right by the front door and staring. It gave me the creeps, but overall I thought he was just a weird man. I live in South California, and they're everywhere. About six foot three Hispanic and wearing a duck's sweatshirt. As I was grabbing some potatoes, he comes uncomfortably close to me and looks at potatoes too. I walked away and go to my friend who was 20 feet away from me. I still don't mention this man to my friend because I thought he just had no clue of keeping a good social distance between people. We finally made our way to the soup aisle and here he comes walking down the aisle right in between me and my best friend to look at chicken broth. I tell my friend we need to go grab other things so we leave the aisle and I give her the rundown on how I believe this man is following me. She agrees that she's seen him and feels weird energy around him. We head over to the tampon section because my friend needed some. I'm standing at our cart and she's squatted down on the ground when this man comes up and squats right next to her, looking at pads and tampons. This made us feel extremely awkward, so we left immediately and went to the back of the store to see if he was actually stalking us. We noticed that in his basket he had nothing but a bottle of Sprite. Yet he's been down so many food and item aisles with us that he should have grabbed something if he was just a normal shopper. We wait about five minutes in the back of Walmart where we start to walk to the front and we see him walking the opposite way as us, peering down each and every aisle. Once he sees us, he stops and just pretends to look at something on a side aisle while keeping eye contact on us. My friend and I went into the makeup section if you know a ghetto Walmart, you know it's blocked with only one way in and one way out with a lot of cameras. We go in here and look out through one of the aisles to see him still searching for us. We start to kind of freak out because we both aren't the strongest girls and know that he can probably take us if it came down to that. We decided to hurry up and get in line to check out. I was talking to my best friend facing away from the cashier when he gets in line right behind us. She did the most ballsy thing I have ever seen her do and told him off. She was saying how he was following us and that he went down every aisle that we did, but he only had a sprite in his basket. Soon after, he scarcely walks away, which still made us feel uneasy. We didn't know if he would be waiting outside for us or have some of his friends ready to get us. We went to a worker and told them to keep their eye out for this guy. After we checked out, we quickly made our way to the car with my friend's taser ready to zap. We made it back safe to the car and didn't see him since our interaction. Hopefully, I never meet this guy again. Hello. This is the story of the dumb decisions I made in February 2019 while in a Tennessee Walmart. At the time, I was 12 years old and had been visiting Tennessee for the first time for a dance competition I was competing in. On this night, it was around 11 at night, and my mom, my grandma, and I had picked up some things at Walmart for the competition the next day. We had just finished dinner, so almost as soon as we had gotten there, my mom had to use the bathroom. She was in there for a while, so I was just waiting outside with my shopping cart surfing Instagram on the crappy Walmart Wi-Fi. My grandmother was waiting in the car. She had been in the bathroom for about 10 minutes and I was growing more and more bored, so I decided that I would start surfing the aisles around me just to keep my short attention span in check, hoping that I would find something shiny to distract me. I turned the third aisle and once I was about halfway through, a shorter man with a plastic Walmart bag in his hand rounded the corner and started slowly stalking behind me. I didn't get a good look at him, but I could definitely tell he was there. It wasn't until he got about a foot behind me that I realized that he was way too close for comfort. I started getting tunnel vision, and my eyes felt all tingly. 
I decided that I should get out of there and I started walking away as normal looking as possible. Once I got a couple feet in front of him, I started basically running, winding quickly between aisles trying to lose him. I was trying to find an aisle with people, but every time I would get to a small group of people, they would walk away. I would stop in an aisle thinking I had lost him, and then he would turn the corner, so I would keep running. I finally lost him once I got to the shoe section. Again, this place was unfamiliar, totally backwards to the Walmart that I was used to. I didn't know how to get back to the bathrooms. I started following the walls until I made it back to the bathrooms after about 25 minutes had passed. I parked the cart back outside and went into the bathrooms, looking for my mom. I thought she was in there so I propped myself up against a wall and pulled out my phone. Six missed calls. My mom had been calling me the entire time and she was freaking out. I answered almost in tears and she started screaming at me. Where are you? I vaguely explained to her what had happened, too overwhelmed and panicky to explain. She and my grandmother, whom she had called to help look for me, met up with me in the bathrooms. They told me people had been calling my name over the speaker, but it was probably when I was in the bathroom. That's why I didn't hear it. We reported the guy to the employees, paid for our stuff and left. I made a very dumb decision during this encounter, so if you ever find yourself in a situation similar to mine, which I hope you don't, abandon your shopping cart, whatever items you had picked up, you can pick them back up later. Tell someone that you're being followed, better to be safe than sorry. I should have turned to face him, there were people all around and if he would have tried anything, they could have heard my screams, as dark as that sounds. Most of the time when people face their attackers and show bravery, they get caught off guard. So creepy guy who followed me around the Tennessee Walmart, let's never, ever, meet again. A friend and I were at her apartment one night when she decided that she needed to do some shopping for the next day. I had a few items I needed to get as well so we went to Walmart down the street. It was about 11 p.m., and this Walmart is open 24 hours, so it's a hub for the crazies. Anyway, we were using one cart and split up as both of us needed different items. I was standing with the cart in the mouthwash section when I took a step to my left to look at a different brand of mouthwash, when I noticed a man wearing a bright blue shirt come right beside of me. I took a step to my right to stand next to my purse that was in the cart. Keep in mind, up until this point, I was the only one in the aisle, and it was in the kid's seat thing of the cart. With my hand on the cart, I took a step to my left to go back to looking at the kind of mouthwash I wanted. I noticed the man also took a step to his left. At first, I thought it was a coincidence, but I tested that theory by simply taking a step to my right and again to my left, all while not making eye contact with the man. He mirrored my movements. I grabbed the mouthwash I was looking at, threw it in my cart, and began looking for my friend. My back was to the man so I couldn't see what he was doing. I found her a couple of aisles over at the vitamin section when I noticed that man again, this time, near my friend. I shrugged it off and moved on. We continued to shop without making any mention of the man, also without seeing him. We got to the register and I saw him again in another aisle. Again, I shrugged it off as a coincidence. The area we live in up until this point was relatively safe, and you never heard much of anything, so I ignored him. Once we finished checking out, I had purchased chocolate milk and was super excited to drink it, so I was trying to open the bottle when my friend was frantically trying to get me to get to the car ASAP. I threw the bottle in one of the bags, and we began walking toward the sliding glass doors. That was when my friend mentioned how a guy had been following her and was right behind us. I looked in the reflection of the glass and saw the same blue color shirt. I told her that he had been following me as well and we booked it for my car. Now, at this point you might be thinking that we were overreacting and I thought so too until this point. My friend stood by the car watching the guy. And I was too as I frantically threw the groceries in my back seat on the opposite side 
so that I could watch him. He got in his car, which was across and a few cars down from us. I guess we were taking too long, and the guy got out and began pacing in the aisle of the parking lot. He almost looked like he was anxious and trying to look busy. I quickly finished putting all the bags in the car, and I whispered to my friend that I was done, and we booked it in the car. The guy notices that we were getting in the car, and he too rushed to his car. I sped out of that parking lot. As we were driving away, we took an extra 10 minutes just driving around so that the guy couldn't follow us. I took a bunch of random turns and ended up back at my friend's house. While we were driving, my friend mentioned how the highway that we were near was a hot spot for human trafficking since it goes through a major city and multiple states. So, to the creepy weirdo at Walmart, let's never meet or see you ever again. This happened about a year ago when I was 16. Keep in mind that I do look older than I am, and when I would wear makeup, I'd look like I was 19 to 20. My parents and I went to a Walmart about 45 minutes away from my home when we went out for dinner. I was, like most teenagers bored in the store, playing on my phone. My earbuds had gone out in one ear and had been for like a month. So I asked my mom if I could look to see if they were cheaper at this Walmart than they are at the Walmart closer to my home. So I go over there alone and look at the price and see that they're $2 cheaper. So I decided to text my mother and ask her if I could get a pair. So I'm leaning against the poles that I used to have price checkers on and listening to music while waiting for my mom to reply. Then this man walks up to me about 5 foot 8 and Mexican, wearing a faded blue jean shirt had to be late 20s, early 30s. He gets literally so close to my face that our noses are almost touching. And he says something in Spanish. And I looked at him and said, What? Because I can't speak Spanish. Then he said in English, using this really creepy but lower voice, You're very pretty. So I have goosebumps by the way he said that. And I pulled my head farther back so his face isn't so close to mine. And I say, um, thanks? And he turns to his friend behind him and starts talking to him in Spanish. And as I said before, I can't understand it. At that point, my mom texts me and tells me I can get the earbuds. So I grab a pair and go running. When I feel I've gotten far enough away, I call my mom and ask where she is. She tells me that she's in the beauty section. To get to the beauty section, I have to go back where that guy is. So I start walking that way, and I'm thinking, if this guy approaches me again, I'll just start talking loudly to my mom. But before I can even finish that thought, she hangs up. So I'm speed walking past this section of the store, and now this guy is at the edge of the aisle, just standing there watching me. So I see my mother and start jogging to her. And I look behind me, and I swear to goodness this guy is following me. So I call for my mom. And she stops to wait for me, and I grab her arm and I'm shaking, and I just tell her that we need to keep walking and go find my dad. So the next day, my mother calls the Walmart and talks to the manager about what happened, and he says, Thanks for letting me know. I'll check to see if it's one of the ones we've had trouble with before. My mom later tells me that the town we were in, a lot of girls my age have gone missing from there. So at school on Monday... I asked one of my friends whose whole family is Mexican if that is a normal thing in that culture, and she says, No. That's creepy. If my tios ever saw that happening, they would beat the crap out of that person. She also said that she thought it sounded like sex trafficking, which is what everyone else I told the story said. So needless to say, I'm much more observant and less carefree now. So creepy dude at Walmart, let's not meet again. A couple of years ago, I stopped by Walmart super early in the morning after leaving a friend's house to pick up a pet carrier. As I'm standing in the pet aisle, deciding on my purchase, a very large and kind of sweaty man walks around behind me and comments on my butt. I'm wearing yoga pants at the time. I am uncomfortable but try to be polite when he asks for my number. I apologize and tell him I have to leave. 
However, as I am checking out at the register, I see the same man again making me even more uncomfortable. I try to hurry out of the store and get to my car as quickly as possible, when again the same man approaches my window and asks if he can take me out. I am beginning to get very nervous at this point and quickly tell him, no thank you. I locked my doors and began to drive away. I had barely drove a few minutes away from the store when I noticed this same man is now following me in his car. I try to give him the benefit of the doubt and just speed up and change lanes, but he does the same. I finally lose him by pretending like I am going to turn, and once he gets behind me and the light goes to change to red, I jumped back into the road and finally lost him. In hindsight, I probably should have reached out to the authorities. It was in the day, but rather early in the morning, and there were not many people around. So creepy Walmart stalker, I hope that we never meet again. A few days ago, I decided to go to Walmart to pick up a few things. That day I was wearing a bright dress with sunflowers printed on it. I wore my hair down, which is also a brighter blonde color. As I was shopping, I went down the international aisle to grab Mirin. As I walked down, I felt eyes on me. I stood in front of the shelves stocked with different sauces and condiments, looking for Mirin, when a guy came so close to me that I had to look at him. The moment we locked eyes, he smiled and said, Hi, how are you? I instantly felt uneasy, so I said nothing, smiled at him, and walked away. There's no particular reason the man made me feel uneasy. He looked fine. He looked like he was in his early to mid-thirties, maybe a few inches taller than me around 5'8", and had brown hair. His dirty orange cut-off shirt and brown boots made me think he was in construction, but who knows. All I know is that he was weird in a way I can't put my finger on. After I walked away, I went to the complete opposite end of the store and kept looking around me. He was nowhere to be found for the next 20 minutes or so that I shopped so I thought I was just overreacting. I started heading towards the checkout area, and once I got to the lines, I saw him standing right next to the refrigerators next to the checkout, staring at me. He had one item in his hand, so after we made eye contact, he walked towards the self-checkout area. I did a 180 and headed for the longest line I could find, thinking I could wait him out. It took about 20 minutes to get through checkout and I dragged my feet walking out of the store, making sure the guy wasn't waiting for me in the store. With him nowhere to be seen, I picked up the pace once I got outside. I started to think I was being irrational. He wasn't unattractive. He gave off no signs of actually being dangerous. I must be crazy, right? Walking towards my car, I saw a brown worker's truck waiting close to the exit start to drive around the parking lot once I stepped outside of the store. I didn't think much of this truck at the time because I had thought the guy had left and at that point I just wanted to get to my car because it was raining. I finished packing my trunk when this same truck started to pull through the spot diagonal of mine, slowly inching into the spot right next to my car so that my driver's side was right next to the truck driver's side window. I heard the guy's voice say, excuse me, as I opened my car door. I quickly slid in hoping I could just get away with him thinking I didn't hear him. I locked the door, turned the car on and quickly turned it into reverse. I started pulling out but before I could get far, the brown truck pulled forward and moved diagonally right behind my car so that I couldn't back up without hitting his car entirely. I looked in front of me and realized with the car in front of me, there was no way I was going to just drive out of there with no issues. I turned my head and saw the guy sitting in his truck with his window rolled down. I decided to roll down my window and asked, What's up? In a hostile tone. He began, I just saw you in the store, you know, and you are absolutely so beautiful, I just had to tell you. Oh, thank you, I said, praying he didn't get out of his vehicle. I couldn't let myself walk away without asking you for your number so that I can take you out he told me. I picked up my hand with my wedding ring and told him, I'm married. As he began to respond, 
I rolled up my window and stared at my steering wheel, waiting for him to move his truck. I couldn't stand to look in his direction, because I felt his eyes on me. So after what seemed like the longest minute, I heard him finally move his truck. I peeled out of there in a heartbeat. The guy might have had great intentions. He might have been genuine. But I got a dark and heavy vibe that didn't sit right with me. So guy at Walmart who blocked me into my spot to ask me out, Let's not meet again.